On a strip of sandy soil Lies a county called Norfolk It's Ontario, south coast, you know And it's surely not remote If you pass through or spend a day Or decide to call it home You'll see why we love it here And are proud to call it our own No Take in the small town atmosphere, be amazed at all that we grow. Like our kids that go and see the world and can't wait to return home. Drop a line in a placid lake or stroll along the shore. Take a tour on a peaceful country road. With hard work, we built a dream that only Will and Hands could do. It's on display at our fall fairs and at all the festivals, too. Eerie beaches, Carolinian forests, where the flower and dog woods bloom. Patchwork fields and rolling hills, it's just a place for you. On a strip of sandy soil Lies a county called Norfolk It's Ontario, south coast, you know And it's surely not remote If you pass through or spend a day Or decide to call it home You'll see why we love it here And are proud to call it our own No Take in the small town atmosphere, be amazed at all that we grow. Like our kids that go and see the world and can't wait to return home. Drop a line in a placid lake or stroll along the shore. Take a tour on a peaceful country road.
hard work we built a dream that only willing hands could do it's on display at our fall fairs and at all the festivals too eerie beaches carolinian forests where the flower and dogwoods bloom patchwork fields and rolling hills it's just the place for strip of sandy soil lies a county called Norfolk. It's Ontario, south coast, you know, and it's surely not remote. If you pass through or spend a day or decide to call it home, you'll see why we love it here. Take in the small town atmosphere, be amazed at all that we grow. Like our kids that go and see the world and can't wait to return home. Drop a line in a placid lake or stroll along the shore. Take a tour on a peaceful country road. Found to be back for more. Oh no. soil lies a county called Norfolk. It's Ontario, south coast, you know, and it's surely not remote. If you pass through or spend a day or decide to call it home, 
You'll see why we love it here And are proud to call it our own No fold, no fold A southern county home No fold, no fold We know you can't go wrong With the friendly foe Take in the small town atmosphere, be amazed at all that we grow. Like our kids that go and see the world and can't wait to return home. Drop a line in a placid lake or stroll along the shore. Take a tour on a peaceful country road. With hard work, we built a dream that only willing hands could do. It's on display at our fall fairs and at all the festivals, too. Erie beaches, Carolinian forests, where the flower and dog woods bloom. Patchwork fields and rolling hills, it's just the place for you. On a strip of sandy soil Lies a county called Norfolk It's Ontario, south coast, you know And it's surely not remote If you pass through or spend a day Or decide to call it home You'll see why we love it here Take in the small town atmosphere, be amazed at all that we grow. Like our kids that go and see the world and can't wait to return home. Drop a line in a placid lake or stroll along the shore. Take a tour on a peaceful country road. Found to be back for more. Oh no. With hard work, we built a dream that only willing hands could do. It's on display at our fall fairs and at all the festivals, too. 
Erie beaches, Carolinian forests, where the flower and no woods bloom. Patchwork fields and rolling hills, it's just the place for you. No folk, no folk, a southern county home. No folk, no folk, we know you can't go wrong with a friendly folk. Okay, I guess, uh, okay, welcome back. Uh, we're going to start the, the meeting again, and we did start at 3 o'clock. Uh, counselors need a nutritional break, so uh, we've had that. Um, we're on to number, item number 6, but we're going to push that down on the agenda and carry on with our deputations. So our, our first deputation is Carrie... Bockenholt and Waterford Skate Park Committee. This is regarding the Waterford Skate Park proposal. So welcome, Carrie. And as I've indicated to everyone else, and I guess you can all hear, um, we have 10 minutes, and I will give you a one-minute warning. Okay? Go ahead. Honorable Chair, Mayor Luke, and Councillors, thank you for the opportunity to present on behalf of the youth of the Waterford area. It is a privilege to be here to represent the dream of our young people and to help make it happen. We've heard the youth voice indicating the benefits of a skateboard park in Waterford. How can council assist us? We would like to request an approval in principle of our plan, securing a capital project number to be considered in the amount of 200,000 for the 2019 20 budget deliberations. A little background on a for our request. I've had significant connection with the young people in Waterford. An informal group for our kids called Why Waterford offers an opportunity for you to be part of the community and stay connected with each other. One of the project achieves was the painting the silos en route to our fantastic trail. A wonderful display of expression and community involvement. The youth are very proud and protective of their contribution. Various events and programs keep our youth active with meaningful activities, developing a sense of pride in their community. We want to continue to foster and develop new opportunities, listening to the voice of the, our stakeholders, the kids. The wonderful community of Waterford has shown amazing investment in this project. Approximately 40 community members, including young people, service clubs, and business owners, attended the initial meeting, pledging an overwhelming show of support. We have community stakeholders on board for sure. We're determined to move forward appropriately, addressing all aspects of our strategic plan. 
County staff has graciously attended two of our meetings informing us of available land for the skateboard park. Hopefully, a suitable location can be secured in the near future. Various plans are being considered as far as cost and viability for the project. A board of directors has been established, three subcommittees, design, fundraising, and planning. We have a logo and a website being developed. Our fundraising is only beginning our first endeavor is our stake and skate event Sunday, July 15th at the Waterford Legion Pavilion, which is being hosted by the Waterford Chamber of Commerce. We'll enjoy a delicious steak, excellent salad and dessert bar, silent auction and lots of fun and community involvement. We'd like you guys to join us. Come and have some fun in Waterford. Plans are underway for an application for capital funds from the Ontario Trillium Foundation. Our community is invested in promoting fundraising activities to realize this dream for our youth. We respectfully request your assistance with this collaborative effort to benefit our youth and all of our community members. The Waterford community thanks you for the opportunity to share our vision for our youth. Thank you. Thank you, Carrie, for being so concise. Appreciate that. Uh, but I'm sure there's going to be some questions from committee members, and I see Mayor Luke's hand up on the, through my peripheral vision here without even looking at him. You are pretty sharp, Mr. Chairman, I will say that. Pretty hard to get something by you. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Thank you, Kerry, for being here. Thank you for your, uh, your leadership in uh, getting this project underway. Um, Mr. Chair, I do have to ask Kerry, I want to be clear on you had mentioned a request uh, from council in a capital budget in the neighborhood of 200,000 I believe and I believe in the same sentence you said 2019 2020 yes Did I hear you correct? okay just wanted... so are you looking for because our budgets go the school year from January to December are you looking for some money for 2019 and then some money, some of the 200,000 in 19, some in the next year's budget in 2020? That's what I want to be clear on what you're suggesting here. Well, we're looking to see what we can fundraise for. We're not looking for all the money from you. We want to work with you with Trillium Founds Foundation. Um, probably maybe probably the bulk of it would be probably 2020. I mean, I'd love to get this built next year, but we got to be realist. It's not going to happen next year. I would rather take the time and make sure that we build it, that we build it right. Okay, Mr. Chair, just to finish. Kerry, what you're saying is, I, I, I'm sorry, I was thinking maybe the park would be a reality next year. Now you're saying uh, 2020. Okay, I get it now. So what you're saying is you'd like to request this council to consider, well, actually be the next council, uh, that'll work on the next uh, budget, but you're looking at a request of 200,000 2019-2020. Yes. You. Okay, I got it. Thank you. Okay. Anything further? Councillor Sonnenberg. <clears throat> thank you, Mr. Chair. Kerry, I want to thank you for your uh, initiative in this endeavor. You're, you're the one that seems to be uh, steamrolling this, this project. It's been in the talking stages for many years in the community of Waterford, and it's Good to see it finally coming to fruition, so thank you. Um, have you been on a tour with Norfolk County officials to pick out sites? We have um, three locations. Um, they came with us to nine different locations. However, we want to make sure that we are working with our community. We do not want to step on anyone's toes. There's been many different areas. We have the trail, we have the dog park, things that people have put their passion into building that we don't want to touch. So we've got it basically down to, but there's about three different locations. Um, the one location is by the Waterford Museum, which is opening their arms to us and saying they'd love to have us there. The other one is by the um, Deer Park. Um, and then the last one is we have to really look at to see what's happening there is by the arena. However, we do know that we have to look into, there is um, green space rented by Grand Erie. So once again, we wanna make sure, we don't wanna take any green space away from our kids because this is for our kids. So we want to 
really look at it realistically, work with Norfolk County, what would work best for the location. Thank you. Okay, anything further from committee members? Seeing no further questions, and I'll just say thank you very much. I appreciate you coming, and you can be seated. I'll look for a motion to receive the deputation as uh, information. Councillor Sonnenberg, uh, seconded by Councillor Wells. Those in favor? It's carried. Is there any action uh, from committee members in relationship to this? Mayor Luke. Uh, thank you, uh, <coughs> Chairman uh, Black. I would put a motion on the floor that this request for $200,000 uh, uh, to assist with the Waterford Skate Park proposal be forwarded to the 2019 capital budget session. Okay, is there a seconder for that? Councillor Sonneber. Any further discussion on the matter? Mayor Luke. Well, Mr. Chair, some may be saying, well, why not make a 2020 budget? Um, first of all, two reasons. One, I don't want it to be forgotten a year and a half from now or two years from now. So if it's forwarded to 2019, it can be discussed uh, this December or whenever capital budget will be looked at by the new council. And secondly, secondly, as we do in so many large projects, uh, whether it be a medical center in Delhi or um, a Norfolk General Hospital capital request commitment, um, that would, by looking at it this year, give council the possibility of maybe putting away a little bit in 2019, half of it or, or something, if they approve of this, um, um, don't, not call it donation, but yeah, this commitment. So I, I think this December, this is the time for the council to discuss okay. this. Thank, thank you. Anything further? Those in favor? Whoops. Did, was there, oh, I'm sorry, James. I didn't see your hand. Go ahead. Thank you, uh, Chairman Black. Uh, I would just like a bit of a clarification on the motion. So we will definitely bring it to the 2019 capital budget deliberations, but would you want that amount to be slated in the 2020 column or would you want it in the 2019 column? Uh, Mayor Luke? Long as the request isn't forgotten and we deal with it, I would leave it up to the wisdom of our treasurer to come forward what he thinks uh, would be the best manner. So any suggestion, Mr. Chair, we get from Mr. Johnson here would be much appreciated. He can bring it what he thinks is best. Is that all right, James? Uh, through uh, Chairman Black, that's great. Thank you very much. Okay. Let me call the question again. Those in favor? Okay, that's carried. Thank you very much. I'm going to move on to our Meisner Dam deputations. We have a number of them, and uh, hopefully we can get through them reasonably quickly. And maybe I can just remind everyone that uh, um, we have had deputations in the past regarding Meisner's Dam. There's been a lot of discussion before, and hopefully what you're doing is bringing us some new information uh, in order for council to make an informed decision. So having said that, I'm going to welcome Marion Gadsby, Port Dover Waterfront Preservation Association. Marion, as I have indicated to everyone else, you have 10 minutes and I'll hold you to that and give you a one minute warning. Thank you very much. Good afternoon, Mayor and Councillors. My name is Marion Gadsby and today I'm talking to you as a director of the Port Dover Waterfront Association. I have with me today property owners Chuck and Sherilyn Powell and several other people. For those of you who do not know me, I have a master's degree in aerospace engineering. My master's thesis required me to know many things, including how fluids move. Since water is a fluid, I understand rivers. Imagine a layer of sand at the bottom of a glass of water. The faster I stir the water, the greater the amount of sand that will come mixed in with the water. If I stir more slowly, the sand will start to settle down. If I stop stirring completely, even more will settle to the bottom of the glass. The Lynn River flows through the Norfolk sand plain. Mixed in with the water is silt picked up from the riverbed and banks and from runoff from the fields after a storm. If the river flows down, slows down, some of the silt will settle to the bottom just like a glass. In a river, if a river gets narrower, the water speeds up, and if it widens, the water slows down. 
to see this in action, stand on the Chapman Street Bridge and watch the water speed up as it enters the sluice of the Meisner Dam and then slow down below the dam. Our river will also slow down if the river becomes deeper. You can create a silt trap by making a river either deeper or wider. Diagram number one is up on the board there. Um, somebody was going to do the, the top diagram, which is also on your screen, shows what happens uh, opposite Tim Hortons on the Queensway. There's a silt trap by digging a hole in the bottom of the Lynn River. As the water passes over the hole, the water slows down and some of the silt settles to the bottom of the hole. After the Lynn River leaves Simcoe, the width and depth stay all out the same until it widens into Silver Lake. Could I have the first map, please? Map number... No, okay, we have technical difficulties. No, there it is. Okay. Uh, this map shows, this is the Lynn River. Here's the Lynn River coming down here. And here it is widening. Pardon? Uh, we can't really. No, no. So that's why I brought the laser pointer. So here, okay, there, okay. So there's the Lynn River. And here it is widening. And you can see how brown this is. This is the brown, is the silt coming down the Lynn River. And as it widens into Silver Lake, it slows down and the silt starts to deposit. Now, this map and all the following maps are actually from the Norfolk County's interactive community web map. <coughs> With some of the stop logs out, the water level in Silver Lake is below the top of the Meisner Dam. After a storm, the dam traps the storm water in Silver Lake and the water level rises. It then takes several days for the water level to return to normal. During this time, the water is relatively still and the heavily stilted storm water will lose some of its silt. This is the equivalent of not stirring the glass of water. The following maps show how effectively the Silver Lake is in removing some of the silt. The next map, this is, Silver Crescent is here, and across there, and you can see this is in 2002. This is where the silt, this is where the river widened, in this point here. Map number three, the next map is the same thing, but in 2006. Once again, there is Silver Crescent, and it is now much closer to Silver Crescent. The next map, the 2010 map, now, in 20, December of 2009 is when you removed some of the stop logs for safety. So it becomes more obvious. But here's Silver Crescent, and here's where the river widens into Silver Lake. It's already moved that far down. In 2015, the la next map, this north end now became so shallow that this north end, part of this is water, part of it is silt, and part of it is purple loose strife and other reeds. But now, your level is all the way down to here. So this is how far the silt has built up in Silver Lake from 2002 to 2015. Map, the next map shows the, this is Silver Lake, here is Black Creek, and here is the harbor, and here is your yacht club. This little silt island here was formed in about three, four years. Imagine that if you, take, if you do not repair uh, the Meissner Dam, the first widening is going to be here, and that silt island is going to end up right in this part here. Once that gets filled in, the next widening is where the Lynn River meets Black Creek, right by the Yacht Club, and you'll end up with a sandbar right across there. The silt will then continue to work its way down the harbor in the same way it has moved all the way down Silver Lake. Um, the Lynn River will always contain some silt. The question is, what do you do about it? The flow charge on the last page, can I have the next page? Uh, shows what council's choices are. The lowest upfront car cost is to do this channel, this part of the flow chart here. Remove the stop logs or remove all of the dam. This would have caused the provincial significant wetlands to dry up and the Lynn River would flow through the whole area. You can choose to not dredge the lab and let the silt build up in the harbor. The cost to the county in this one is the loss of the marine industry and jobs, the loss of the yacht club, but also the lowering of the property taxes because anybody who has owns a property here is going to be asking for their property to be reassessed. Their property value is going to go down and the taxes that, part, that the Norfolk County collects on those properties will also go down. 
Another option would be to remove the dam, but start dredging the harbor regularly from the water. The cost of doing from there, where you have to put it on a barge, get the barge, then so it comes out an average of about $42 a cubic meter. Whereas, if you were to repair the Meisner Dam, you would retain, you would revitalize the wetlands, you would restore the Silver Lake, you would use Silver Lake as a silt trap and drag regularly from the land in the middle of so, uh, along the edge of Silver Lake. The cost of that is about $8.50 a cubic meter. Now, I pointed out in the very last map, there was a little silt island that represents about 6,000 cubic meters. If you were to do it from the harbor, you're talking about 255,000. If you do it from Silver Lake, you're talking 51,000. For comparison, when the temporary coffer dam let go and you had to dredge about 7,000 cubic meters in about 2010, their cost was about $230,000, so that's about the idea on there. So repairing Kweisner Dam is actually going to, in the long run, save you money. Now, if I see just the bottom part of this, okay. Now, it is about a million over budget. This amount could be financed and paid back over 25 years with interest, just like a mortgage. If the interest rate is 4%, then the cost to repay the loan would be about $60,000. I've updated it since I saw that staff report. And that's about 92 cents per person. So imagine standing on the lift bridge and looking north and not seeing any boat larger than an outboard. Imagine the impact this would have on Port Dover and all of Norfolk County. This is what will likely happen if you do not control the silt. If you don't want to silt the harbor to silt in, then you will have to dredge. The most cost-effective way of dredging is from silt traps in Silver Lake. Norfolk County recently won an award for upgrading the county administration building in Delhi to Energy Star status. You paid money now in order to save on energy costs in the future. In the same way, you can pay money now and repair Miser Dam in order to save on dredging costs in the future. We think that the best way to keep the silt from the Lynn River out of the Port Dover Harbor is to repair the Meisner Dam and use Silver Lake as a silt trap. As well, you have protected a vibrant and active harbor and tourist attraction as well as a provincially significant wetland. Thank you very much. I should have said at the beginning, uh, our procedural bylaw does not allow for outbursts and applause, so I would appreciate it if you just restrain your enthusiasm. Thank you very much. And thank you very much, Marion, for your deputation. Are there any questions from committee members? Seeing uh, Councillor Height. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Uh, through you to the deputation. Uh, Marion, when you say repair the dam, do you mean repair it the way it's in the staff report or repair it with the stop logs back into it? Uh, repair it as it is in the staff report because um, when Silver Lake, when the stop logs are out, Silver Lake also acts as a stormwater retention pond. So some of the silt that is not trapped by when it widens. So I actually, we had about two inches of rain last night, and I went down and took a, a picture of the, uh, of the dam, and the water's almost up to the top, but it's below that, and the water's very brown. So as long as it is sitting in Silver Lake for the day or two that it's going to take to come back down to the normal level, it is losing even more silt. So that is what, one of the reasons that Silver Lake is such an effective silt trap. It not only works when the river is actually flowing, it actually works after a storm when the water is the siltiest, if there is such a word, and you are trapping it and you're letting it settle down. Okay, thank you for that. Now, previously when the stop logs were in and everybody had waterfront homes, how it was still a salt, silt trap, was it not? Uh, yes but not as effective as it is right now. And also, it was a lot deeper. When I was a kid, a teenager, and we took swimming lessons in Silver Lake, the lake was quite deep. Mm -hmm. But as over the years, you don't notice it when a lake goes from 10 feet to 9 feet if you're only 5 feet tall. Right. Um, when it gets from 5 feet to 4 feet, you notice it. You really notice it when it goes from 3 feet to 2 feet and the ducks and geese can walk across the silt. So it is not so much that it is, was not a silt trap before, it's just that it has got to the point now where something has to be done. That's right. Okay, thank you for that. Now, as I understand it, Ivy Dam is 
north on this river. That's correct. So is, does it not perform silt trap? Uh, a dam only works as a silt trap if you clean out in behind it or if there's a widening below it. But the ivy dam, the, the, the width of the river above and the width of the river below are basically the same. So you don't get any widening effect. There's no sluice there. It's not that it goes through a sluice and then widens. It overflows pretty much the whole top. Mm -hmm. So you don't have any expansion, and it's the, expand, it, it's, it's the water expanding that slows the water down and allows the silt to settle. But you don't have that. And the other thing is if you clean out behind it, then all of a sudden it becomes deeper. But if you don't clean out behind a dam, then it no longer acts as a, as a silt trap behind it either. Okay, so I guess my concern, at some point in time, the silt is going to fill in Silver Lake. That's correct. So... And at that point there, whether the dam is fixed or not, it is going to, um, when it goes through the sluice, it'll widen and it'll lose its silt. So then how do, so you'll have a mud puddle? Uh, eventually the mud puddle will dry up and you'll end up with the river over the whole length. Mm -hmm. held back by a dam. The provincial wetlands will basically dry up because there won't be any water to back up to keep it healthy. Right, and you're recommending that option? No. But repairing it, that's what's okay. going to happen. Okay, when it repairs, yes. But repairing it then leads to the next thing, which is to then rehabilitate the wetlands and to dredge out the bottom end to keep it as a lake. So that would be the next part, but the MNRF has, did not want any discussion of dredging until the dam is repaired, because unless the dam is repaired, there's no point in the discussion. But there is a group of us, there's a group that we are working together to try and put together a plan to do that work, to rehabilitate the wetlands and to dredge out the bottom half to restore a, a silver lake. Okay, thank you for that. Now, I, I guess, like, we've heard from other people that would rather have it a river. That's correct. So, that is, in effect, doing a similar thing, is it not? Naturalizing the river instead of judging out, I don't know, thousands of pounds of material. <laughs> um, in what way? In other words, but if it's a river all the way, how are you going to get the silt out? In the other same words, way we do at the Conservation Authority, you build silt traps in certain spots and it holds it and it's all engineered to flow clean. Okay, then if you do simply silt traps, you lose the silt that comes out when it is used as a stormwater retention pond. Also, if you remember that little silt island that I showed you on that very last, the 2015 map, the surface area of that island is about um, 45,000 square feet. The silt trap on the Lynn River up across from Tim Hortons is approximately 50 feet long by 20 feet wide. Mm -hmm. That's 1,000 uh, square feet. You would need 45 silt traps to do the same job to take that amount of silt out of, the, out of there. There is so much silt coming down that Lynn River that I am not sure that just silt traps are going to work. Because if you picture, okay, back to my example of the glass with water. So if you are, think of stirring really fast, so a picture of a whole series of silt traps. You stir fast, you stir a little bit slower as it goes over silt traps, some of the silt will come down. You're back to the regular depth, it goes back to being fast, it then goes back to being medium. So you will be taking silt out on every single silt trap if you had a whole series of them. When the Lynn River widens into Silver Lake, it's the equivalent of stirring really fast and then stirring really, really slowly, really slowly, really slowly forever. There's no restraints. It's not that you have to do it before you run out of silt trap. The um, width of the Lynn River just before it goes into Silver Lake is approximately 50 feet. Just above the point, about where Silver Crescent is, the width of the basin there is 450 feet. It goes nine times the width. And there's no way that a silt trap in the sand thing you can dig. If it was clay, you can dig a fairly deep silt trap. Mm -hmm. But in a sand plain, you go to the sand hills and try and dig a, a deep hole that's not very wide. It doesn't work. It keeps caving in. So because this is the sand plain. There is a limit to the depth that you can dig a silt trap, which means you have to have multiple silt traps. 
in order to do the job of one leak. Okay. Thank you for that. Councillor Britton. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, very quickly, thanks, Marion, for your presentation. Um, <clears throat> Black Creek, have any sediment traps? No, it doesn't. That would be another. But it is a totally different. The Black Creek runs through the Haldeman Clay Plain as opposed to the Norfolk Sand Plain. Also, the Lynn River has an aquifer source. It runs 12 months of the year, whereas Black Creek is runoff only, so therefore there's very little in the winter. And also, it is much harder to wash clay off of fields than it is to wash sand off of fields. So it looks black because there is sediment in there, but it's clay particles that are very, very fine, so therefore they take a long time to settle down. On um, Black Creek, you'd be better to work with Alice to pr try and prevent the uh, clay running off because they do a lot of work. We have talked to Alice, and th so they would be doing, you'd be better along Black Creek to work with the property owners in there to prevent the runoff, which is what's bringing the silt into Black Creek to begin with. Okay, well, I, uh, the reason I asked that, uh, I've been up Black Creek past the uh, marina by... Uh, I think it's up past Jalen Crescent area. Mm -hmm. that, yes. And it's very, very, you know, brown when it comes down there. Yes, because there was a clay particles. Whereas yeah. the Lynn River looks cleaner because it actually, after a storm, like um, there was a, a storm, yeah, last night. We had about two inches of rain. It has actually raised the water level in Silver Lake to about four inches below the top of the dam. Um, the water is very, very brown. Unfortunately, I didn't get the time to take the pictures, but I sent all of you an email that shows a, uh, uh, the sluice in 2015 where the water is down low and nice and clear, and a one at 3 o'clock this afternoon where it is very muddy and way up to the top. And it's that muddy, silty water that you wish to trap and which silt traps will not trap. Thank you. Anything further, Councillor Sonnenberg? Thank you, and thank you for your presentation. Let's go back to the original lake that was formed when the dam was built 150 years ago. Right. What percentage of that lake, by volume, is now silt? Any <laughs> estimate? Any estimate? Uh... I haven't done any soundings on it, there, but the bottom half, the top half, okay. Could you go back to the one in 2010? Uh, 2010, there, okay. So you can see in 2010, okay. So this whole thing has started to form an island right there. So that is basically all solid land, okay. Um, this is where the silt, that silt island was that's in the 2015. So that right now has got trees, little trees growing on it. There's big trees growing up along here. So, but this part here, although it is, you look at it, it looks solid. It's purple loose strife. And if you stand there, you can actually see the glint of water all through it. So it's how do you estimate how much is reed and how much is water? But I know as I was up there this morning that up in here, there is still some water, so the wetlands are still getting some water. This is, you've got this island here, and from there down is pretty well uh, water, but it's not very deep. I don't know exactly how deep the lake was 150 years ago. I know when I took swimming lessons there in about 1958, 59, um, you couldn't touch the bottom once you got beyond the, where the, swing, the swimming rope was. But then I wasn't that tall. I'm not that tall now, so I wasn't tall then. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> but I know, um, just a moment, I can talk to, if I could ask somebody. Judy, how deep was the lake when you were? Could you touch the bottom? No. I, I would say the lake was 10 feet deep. Like okay. And it, and it, yeah. Okay. Work. So about 10 feet. But I don't know. Uh, 10 feet could have been coming up from 15, 20 feet in, I don't know what it was in, you'd have to... Extrapolate by the, by the height of the dam. How high was the dam when it was, what wall of water would the dam hold back? How high is the dam? Okay, well the dam, 
um, is the present height, plus they had flashboards about this high on that, that, and the water went over the top. Right. Okay. So you had an additional, well, it's one meter below and a one meter, so it's four, it was four feet deeper than what it is right now. Um, Do we know how high the cement dam is? 14 feet? Yeah, about 14. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Well, if it's 14 feet deep here and it goes back to nothing over here where the, where the lake starts, I think we could kind of figure out what percentage is silt, could we not? Yeah, a fair amount. Yeah. <laughs> Better than 50% would be yes, silt. Yes, yes, yes. So whether it's 75 or 80, I don't know. <laughs> Better than half filled with silt. Yes, okay. but that has taken approximately 150 years to do. Thank you. That's but that, anything okay. further? Okay, thank you, Mary, and you can take your seat. Appreciate your deputation and uh, uh, motion by Councillor Luke to receive the deputation as information. Councillor Wells has seconded. Those in favor? Carried. And I move on to our second deputation by Judy Malpass, and again, this is regarding Meisner Dam. Judy, like I've indicated to everyone else, you have 10 minutes, and I'll give you a one-minute warning. Thank you. Hi, my name is Judy Henning Malpass. I'm a lifetime resident of Port Dover. I'm here today as a private citizen to give you some information that uh, should help you make an informed decision for the importance of repairing Meisner Dam and the impact it will make on Norfolk County. The provincially significant wetland and endangered species at the north end of Silver Lake can only survive if the dam is repaired. Silver Lake, as far as I can find, did not have a designated wetland until the late 1990s. In December of 2009, the water in Silver Lake was lowered for safety reasons. This lower level, along with the silt buildup, allowed purple loose strife and other reeds to grow. The buildup of silt has created a solid landmass overgrown with trees and invasive weeds, and the <coughs> silt has blocked the secondary channel to bring fresh water into the wetlands. The species at risk over the whole range, um, there's range of birds, insects, mammals, and also plants which provide food for native species. When a balanced biosphere like we had in Silver Lake is thrown out of balance, all aspects of plant and animal life are disrupted. The proof of this statement is in the influx of coyotes, expansion of breeding grounds for the infestation of mosquitoes, ticks, methane gas from rotting fish, turtles, and birds. Another serious issue is endangered species that are trying to survive. The snapping turtle is high on the list according to the Ministry of Natural Resources and Forestry website in Peterborough, as well as, as the frogs, the green and, and peepers, and the green and gray and blue herons. The list includes not, and it's not limited to pollinators such as honeybees and the milkweed that they need to survive. Bats lacking nesting places in order to control the growing swarms of mosquitoes, and yes, the uncontrolled long grasses for breeding grounds for ticks. Websites such as MNRF, Long Point Basin Land Trust, Birds Canada, Alice, and the Nature Conservancy Canada, Ontario Region, Norfolk News, will give you the information about why having a clean wetland is so important. Any wetland must have a significant amount of water. And right now, there's some, but not very much, wetland, uh, water in the wetlands in Silver Lake. If the Meisner Dam is not repaired, there will be no wetlands. The wetlands will dry up. They'll destroy the habitat for endangered species, which I've already listed. And, and if Meisner Dam is repaired, then the work can be done to rehabilitate the wetlands and reopen the secondary channel to divert some of the Lynn River through the wetlands. This will ensure that the wetlands have a consistent supply of fresh water. I'm trusting, and I mean I am trusting Council, that you will make the yes decision to approve the money to repair the Meisner Dam so we can move forward. As you know, it's been a few years since we've started this. 
and we don't, I think, really need to continue it much further. Norfolk County residents and visitors will again, once, will once again be able to and continue to enjoy the benefits of Silver Lake, the wetlands, Lynn River, and Black Creek. Okay, thank you very much, Judy. Appreciate that. Um, any questions from committee members? Seeing none, you may take your seat. I guess it's a yes, thank, then, is yes. it? Yes, thank you. Thank and, you. Uh, look, <laughs> That's I'm, all I need to know. Okay. At least you're smiling, Judy. Uh, I'm looking for a motion to receive the deputation as information. Councillor Height moves. Councillor Geisen seconds. Those in favor? And that is carried. Thank you very much. I'm going to move on to our third Meisner Dam deputation from Tim Rogers. And Tim is uh, representing the Port Dover Yacht Club. Tim, uh, again, 10 minutes and a one-minute warning. Thank you, Mayor Luke and Councillors. It won't take 10 minutes. Uh, my name is Tim Roger. I am here on behalf of Port Dover Yacht Club. Port Dover Yacht Club was founded in 1946, has 200 members, is a major landowner on, of land on the, on, along Black Creek, and of the 300 boat docks that are located north of the lift bridge in Port Dover, the Yacht Club is home to 70 of them. On an annual basis, our club hosts over 400 guests to our club, most of them come from the United States, and they collectively spend tens of thousands of dollars in Port Dover every summer. If the dam is not fixed, we believe that uh, the, both the Lynn River and Black Creek will silt in, requiring ongoing dredging at great expense to the county, as Marion explained. We're also concerned that if dredging is not maintained, that it will spell the end to recreational boating north of the lift bridge displacing over 300 boats that are docked in those affected waters. Question we have is where would those boats go to? The outer marina holds 472 boats and it's full. Turkey Point's full. All the other marinas in the county are full. Will the, would the county at that time consider, would they be open to spending tens of millions of dollars to expand the marina? Or will we lose our boating community and the transient visitors that we get and the money that's spent on boating and, and from those uh, visitors to other counties to the east with docks in Nanticoke, Dunville, and Port Maitland? This question is asked. Port Dover Yacht Club supports the Port Dover Waterfront Preservation Association's plan to have Norfolk County invest money now to prevent exorbitant costs in the future. And Port Dover Yacht Club asks that council support that as well. Thank you. Okay, and thank you for being so concise. Appreciate that. Are there any questions from committee members? Councillor Brenton. Thank you, Mayor, or sorry, <laughs> Councillor Black. Um, through you to uh, Mr. Rogers. Question, uh, have you had any trouble with Black Creek uh, uh, siltation in your area? I, I, I haven't with Black Creek, and my mom used to have a property right near the end of Black Creek. You mentioned that you were up at the end, uh, right near the, the end. Um, the only problem we had is when the water levels got ridiculously low, but there was, there was just low water levels that, that caused that. As far as siltation, my mom lived there since the uh, 80s, and uh, we had a pretty big boat back in there uh, just up until a few years ago and never had problems with siltation in Black Creek at the far end and, and all the way up to the lift bridge. I've never encountered it there. Okay, and you, and you indicated, too, that all these marinas are full? They, to the best of my knowledge, if we go into the, uh, the Fin and Feather, the Turkey Point Marina, um, uh, forgive me, I, I, the other ones that are out in the Long Point area, I mean, there may be an occasional slip here and there. Somebody didn't pay, uh, didn't you, come in. Your but, yacht uh, club is full? Yes. No, and uh, the marina outside, the one that we own is full? Yes, well, there may be the occasional exception, but for all intents and purposes, it's tough to get dockage in Port Dover. So we should charge more money for ours, maybe, eh? That, I, that's, I've said that all along, but I don't <laughs> want them to raise mine. That's... Thank you. Thank you. Okay, anything further? Okay. Thank you. Thank you very much, Tim. Appreciate it. And a motion to receive the dep deputation as information. Mayor Luke, seconded by Councillor Oliver. Those in favor? It's carried. Moving on to our...